Shalom, 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 y'all. It's Michael Israel. You're watching Spiritual Combat. And today we are continuing the Straightway Life series. And we are going to be interviewing Brother Daniel. And he is the head of Straightway Indy. Uh, shalom, Brother Daniel. Appreciate you um, taking the time. Um, out of your busy schedule to come on here and uh, bless the saints. I'm going to hand it over to you to uh, give an uh, introduction, and uh, then after that, we'll get things going. Shalom, shalom. Bless y'all. Brother Daniel here in Straightway, Indiana. Uh, just honored, man, to be on this uh, broadcast today and to let y'all peek in a little bit of what we got going on here. Um in Straightway, Indiana. Bless all the saints of the Most High Yah. Bless all of the righteous of Israel. Bless y'all abundantly. All right, all right. So, uh, Brother Day, kind of the way I wanted to go about this is just kind of a, kind of in a chronological way. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna spend a short amount of time just on, on your past, your uh, previous career and and then you coming in the straight way and then the bulk of the time we're going to spend discussing community and and um straight way and everything like that so i'm gonna just hand it over to you to just discuss um you know your prior career and then what yourself what led you uh to come into straight way yes so sir. Hand it over. we um well myself and we, we we call this land sometimes we, we joke about it it's the land of the pks because you got a whole lot of uh preacher kids or what they would call preacher preacher children um <laughs> that are you know a part of this here and me I, I was in the same boat um me growing up my father was a pastor um for many many years um Mine was a little bit different though. My father, especially towards the end of his life, uh, I started doing a Bible study towards the end of my football career when I decided, okay, you know, I need to get serious. I really need to know what's in this book. And that was the beginning of the journey because like I said, my father, he started to actually come on my Bible studies that I would do every week. I did a Bible study every week for about three years, strong. Mm. And he would come on and he would listen and, you know, and then towards the end when the most high really started to wake me up, obviously the tone changed a little bit. So with that being said, you know, my father really wanted to hear, he started to remember things from his childhood. My father and my whole family is from Jamaica. So wow. my father hearing a lot of things from his childhood, um, he grew up with some, you know, some of the values that we keep now. Um, grew up in the holiness churches and, you know, uh, believed in women dressing modestly and not eating certain things. And you know what I mean? Just the basics. So towards the end of his life, he really wanted to learn. And he actually asked me, you know, he wanted me to teach him toward the end of his life, man. And uh, so I got to spend some time with my father in that dynamic. Um, but, you know, most people know uh about this community here um you got myself you got robert mathis um that were two former nfl players um that played for a pretty long time and with that timing you know i brought I played 14 years i played seven years in the nfl and you know it was a good time your body pays for it um, now, especially, but a lot of times we really don't even really too much talk about it. Um, the whole NFL and because that's, that's so far gone for us. Um, we're on a new mission. Um, and that mission is to get to the kingdom. That is the goal. So how do we do that? We do that by loving y'all with all our heart, mind, our soul and loving our neighbors, loving his children as we do ourselves. So, you know, that's how we really model every single thing that we do. And we do that, you know, through love, whether it be, whether it be, you know, your, your normal, your hugs, your, 
kiss you, whatever. Or tough love too, you know, holding each other accountable. So it, it's been working for us and we're just following the example that Pastor Dow's put in front of us um, through the word, through, through you know, uh, uh, Elder Rufus who has his community been there plus 10 plus years, you know, uh, what Elder Mitchell's doing. I mean, so many different examples that we have. So we say glory to the king. Um, what, one of the things, one of the uh, videos uh, that y'all did that I really remember that really kind of motivated me was, and I remember it was right near the beginning of this whole Corona thing. And I remember, I guess, I think it was you, Rob, and, and the other brothers, y'all were driving out of the city for the last time singing uh, Country Road, Take Me Home. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk, talk about that whole transition from um, how all that came about where you were a home community and then you came to, uh, onto land. Well, um, when I was first introduced to Straightway and hearing the message, Pastor been playing, like he says, that one string banjo for years and years and years. And I just thank the most high that I heard it. I heard the music being played. And what ended up happening is once I saw um, what was going on, I said, you know what? I want to follow the exact same example. And I've had people to tell me, man, you got to chill. You, you know, you're, you're a fanatic, whatever. But I didn't care. I was like, I'm going to do the same thing. So once I saw what Pastor Dow was doing, I went down there. Uh, and my first feast was a Passover. And I saw, I came back and I said, man, I'm selling it all. And I literally sold it all. Every single thing. And people to this day, man, is like, man, you crazy, man. You you know, obviously you sold the cars and the, you know, the clothes and the jewelry and, you know, all of these things that you think that you want to obtain in this world. Sold all of them, man. And memorabilia was one big thing, man. I sold championship rings. I sold everything. Got rid of it. And sure. I used that money towards what we're doing now. And once that happened, obviously Rob came in. And Rob, the most high, was dealing with him as well. And the way it happened is we started with a homestead first. Myself and Brother Lee. Brother Lee, a very, very, very faithful, faithful brother. That brother, man, he has followed me every step of the way mm. since we've been in this thing. Um, I actually introduced Lee to Christianity. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And then it wasn't even a couple months later, the most I was dealing with me, where I just stopped going to church. And <laughs> he was still going. And he called me like, man, what's, what's going on? I said, brother, I got to talk to you. I got to talk to you. And But, man, just a faithful brother, man. And that brother came in, and he ended up moving in. Then after that, um, brother Rob. Brother Rob. I mean, that's one of the most humble humble men I've ever met in my life. That dude could be doing anything and, and have anything he wants. But I saw that man give it all up. And I saw that man literally move in a room in my home, my previous home. Brother Samuel came right after that. So we started a homestead um, first. And once I saw all of this going on, we all crammed up in there. Like I said, Brother Samuel, I, I mean, to speak to Brother Samuel, Brother Samuel is one of the most faithful, wise young men you will ever meet. Beautiful family, his wife, his son, just beautiful. And we all came together, man. We all came together and <laughs> prayed about it, ended up finding this land here. Through My wife ended up finding it. And uh, pastor came down after that. We all walked the land for hours. And Shepard said, this is a good place. He said, it's a really good place. So we started the process and we moved on, man. I'm telling you, and the enemy fought us tooth and nail. The The, the previous uh, neighborhood that we lived in, you know, it, it was a pretty, if you were to say, predominant neighborhood. People could put their house on the market and they could sell an hour later. Like I've mm. seen examples of how people's houses selling an hour later. 
in my house was one of the better taken care of houses on the block. And it took us a year plus for that house to sell. Wow. We did everything we could, put thousands of dollars in it to getting that house sold. But when that thing sold, it sold in the middle of the winter. We was moving stuff in ice and everything. But we got them on them trucks, closed, and closed on the other property in the same day, within within a couple hours. And it wow. was right before Shabbat. Mm. Got here, and I tell you what, that was a, that was a Shabbat arrest. I tell you that much. Everybody was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it was just to see what the father's doing, man. We got a picture that we took the first day on this land when we moved in. The pastor had showed it on Blog Talk, said the brothers in Indiana have moved on the land. And that's where you saw that video a couple of days later when we were talking about Country Road, take yeah. us home, you know, so in the middle of nowhere, man. So we out here and, and, and really enjoying it. And um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to put some pictures up, and I want you to talk about some of the work going on on the land and, and um, some of the activity, you know, uh, the construction, planning, uh, you know, land clearing, all the work going on. So I'm talk about some of the stuff you guys have been working on. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, talking to you prior to this, <laughs> looking at some of these pictures, I haven't went back and really looked at, you know, these pictures, man. And to see what we've been able to accomplish by the grace of the Most High Yah in, in a year and a half, almost two years is amazing, man. I mean, this this is amazing. That's right there in that picture. The first one was when we were, I think we was trying to catch our chickens, man, to get them back after letting them free range for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But here's the tabernacle, man, where we were framing to get the tabernacle uh, framed up and drywall and everything that we needed to do. And 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 I got a, I got an extraordinary group of brothers that's here, man. Brothers is really dialed in. They brother Frog Man up there. That's his thing, man. He he he's the guy that does, that does heights. <laughs> he, he gets up on a roof. He'll climb trees. He'll he'll do whatever to get the job done, man. This picture right here, you can hold for this one <clears throat> for a little bit. This picture right here is a real, as Pastor says, a teaching tool. Because Shepherd said not to take the labor out of everything you do. This job right here was tough. This is our watermelon patch, water and watermelon and cantaloupe, and. The brothers, we got out there, and Brother TJ was up here at the time, too, and Little Freeman. And we dug and dug and dug the footers around this thing just to get this fence dug down into the ground. And we did it old school, man, with just shovels. And it was so many rocks and weeds. And it took days for us to get this thing right. And then to turn around and till and build the fence and do all of that. But when you see the reward now... I mean, it's over two to three to maybe 400 plus watermelon and cantaloupe that's sitting in there right now that we're going to take some down to the feast too. But just sitting in there right now, just growing. And every day, man, we it's some conversation about this just to see how the Most High has blessed the work of our hands. So we are really, really happy about this, man. The labor pastor said it. Don't take the labor out of everything because it's just so much more rewarding, man, when you can go out there today and see the fruit of your labor. Mm. That's, a, that's a good picture there. That's nice. Ah, that's the, that, that's the kitchen. <laughs> that's where it goes down. We are, this building I'm sitting in, I'm sitting in the dining hall right now. And this building, man, it was nothing in here. It was three pillars in here. That was it. Three pillars, and it was full of sawdust. Over forty years of sawdust. The previous owner, this was part of his sawmill. So it took so it took us weeks just to clear the dust out of this place. Mm. But to see they were able to do the floor and put in the fans and get our kitchen equipment, and now to see us being able to eat every meal together as a community in this building, you know, it's a beautiful thing. We've had guests that come here. And one of the biggest things that they notice is that the children are not on electronics. The children are always outside. We eat every meal together. And they always say, man, those are values that are lost that we need to bring back. And the thing that gives me is I'm saying to myself, yeah, that's a true statement, but who's willing to sacrifice for those values to come back? 
Right. Who's willing to sacrifice for the values to come back? Because it's good when you can actually sit down and look across the person from you and talk to them. You know what I mean? And the children are not just sitting on TV and electronics and video games all day. They're able to get out and be in the woods. we got a bunch of little boys here just learning to do the landscape, learning to do what the brothers are doing here. So, man, it's, it's, it's just beautiful. I just thank the Father. I really, truly do. That's what Teacher Shane came up. Teacher Shane and Brother Brett came up from the land. I'm telling you, we have a beautiful ministry. I'm going to tell one thing about this picture here. Um, and you know, our shepherd, he never goes around. But the word says, let the lips of another man praise you. I tell you what. I was trying to figure out sound systems to put in the tabernacle here. And I was calling Shepard for some advice. I said, okay, Shep, you know, what should I do? How do I do this? And Shep said, Brother Daniel, you don't worry about it. He said, you send some brothers down here whenever y'all need, and I'm going to have Teacher Shane put a package together for y'all. And I said, okay. And we got in the truck, got sent some brothers down there, and Pastor turned around in the sound system from the old tabernacle. They turned around and they loaded it up in the truck along with about 50 to 60 chairs, tables, and sent it right up here. And then turned wow. around and sent Teacher Shane and Brother Brent up here. Teacher Shane came up here, wired the whole building, and Brother Brent came up and helped us take down one of the garage doors and build, as you can see in this picture, and build the wall there and hung another door and taught us so much. And you you just can't say enough about this ministry. I mean, when you look at, I've, I've, I've given thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars to the Christian church, to organizations, to things. And for the man of y'all in this generation, Pastor Charles Dow, to turn around and say, okay, look, I got something for y'all. Y'all going to need this. And then turn around and send the, send the help. And the teacher Shane came up here, Brother Brent, and wired this whole thing. It's beautiful in there. We worship in there already. We're just waiting on the carpet now, but we got the thing painted. The walls are up. I mean, it, it, I, I can't say enough. They go a little video over there. I can't say enough, my bro. That we're in here and we're able to worship the king in this building where we've worked hard to do. Yeah, I mean... I can't say enough about this ministry and what the father is doing through this ministry. Uh, br Brother Dave, if you could talk about the, um, the, the character of the brothers and sisters uh, in your community and in the ministry and the work ethic um, and the serious mindedness of these brothers and sisters, if you could. Hallelujah. Will you, will you look at what we got on the land here? Um, it's clearly led by the brothers here. Um, when you see the character of the brothers, I, I, I've been blessed, man. I really, truly have been. Like I said, you got Brother Rob, Brother Samuel, Brother Lee, Brother Dre, and that's just a few of the brothers. You know, Brother Jonathan, uh, Brother Petty. I mean, so many of these brothers that come on this land man daily and work brother trey we got a serious minded group of brothers that work extremely hard their character shows this brother petty right there their character shows and not only do we work extremely hard we have a good time working anybody who's been around us know that we like to laugh you know we like to joke and you know with each other but we know when it's time to get serious we know when it's time to be dialed in and we and, and the work is getting done and we learning so much. And then the sisters, the sisters work extremely hard here. We got a good group of sisters. And what that usually does is it it kind of takes care of itself because just like anybody else, you get riffraff to come around too. And when you get riffraff to come around, it exposes them. And it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long at all. Usually what ends up happening is you got somebody to come in and it'll run, be a couple weeks, a couple months, whatever. But then when it's time to put the work in, because one thing I'm always going to invite people to do is, yeah, come during the week on your day off. Yeah, come on. Come on over, man. Let's get this work in. 
And out there in that hot sun or when it's extremely cold, either way, you're going to really see the character of a whole lot of people. You're going to see who get the murmuring and complaining. You're going to see who, you know, who get the scaling back, don't want to work. All of a sudden, they disappear. You don't know where they at. But they always show up at dinner time, though. It don't matter. They could disappear all day. But dinner time, they're going to show up. <laughs> They're going to show up at dinner time. <laughs> and the thing about, and anybody know, the thing about the brothers here is we'll talk about you. We'll talk about you. You come up here with that foolishness and, and you ain't you ain't putting the work in with everybody else. We're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about you to your face. We're going to laugh about it. We're going to joke about it. And it's all an intent to tell you, hey, let's go. Step your game up. And you have brothers to do, but then you have people that scale back. You never hear from them again. But, hey, it is what it is. That 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 work convicts them. You ain't lying. You ain't lying. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see. Uh, talk if you can, um, but then talk talk a little bit about the similarities um, the with uh, your experience in the NFL with the similarities that you see in, in the Most High's word and the way straightway adheres to the Most High's word? Um, when you play in the NFL, you had a schedule. Um, and your schedule required you, no matter how you felt, no matter what was going on, you were required to wake up early. You were required to be places on time, be in meetings on time, be at practice on time. You were required to take care of your body. You were required to watch film and study your playbook. These were, were requirements for you to be successful. And the people that lacked were the people that got taken out or like we'd like to say cut or released. And you start off a season with 90 people on the roster. But we know every year that it's got to get trimmed to 53 people. So a lot of people that you would see, you you don't see them people no more. You, it's been people I played with that I knew when when they would be gone, I would never see them again in my life. And that's hell true. Now, the same thing in the faith. It requires you to get up early. Spend time in your playbook in the word spend time in prayer spend time in fasting it requires you to show up on jobs on time it requires you to work hard and not only that one of the main things where you could see what you're dealing with with a person spiritually is how their spirit is on jobs see how they are when they come to, when they come to be around the brother are you hype and happy one day then the next day you down in the dumps and you don't want to talk to nobody or then the next day you got headphones on while everybody working and talking and then the next day you happy again and you you know you you, you just you, you you joking and all of that are you consistent easy i'd rather have you either you're gonna be up or you're just gonna be a person that don't never say nothing that's just who you are so it's the similarities is very it's, it's the same it's the exact same thing, but except one, you was doing it for a Super Bowl. This one here, you're doing this for the kingdom. So you know every single day, every single day, can you love one another? You know, you got some people who the love is just, oh, I love you, I love you. Then you got other people that just, they king or queen rebuke. Every time they just want to rebuke and correct, rebuke and correct. But you can't never find a balance, like where it's, okay, I can actually love on somebody too and not just always rebuke them. You see what I'm saying? So the, the similarities is the exact same thing, but one is far more serious than holding up a, a damn Lombardi trophy. You know, <laughs> this this is for the kingdom. So, hey, right. we sharpening each other. Let's just say that. And, and um, uh, something we were talking about um before the show, you were saying, uh, uh, you were telling me all you need is a couple more good brothers and sisters on the land. Um, when you say that, 
elaborate on when you, what you mean when you say a couple more good brothers and sisters on the land. What a I know you, on some, you just hit on some of that, but if you could elaborate. Yeah, the word says the harvest is plentiful and the labors are few. And when I tell you that it's true, not only in the natural sense, but it's also true in the spiritual sense. I mean, when you look at this thing, you say, okay, let's look at the natural sense real quick. Let's take the literal garden. When that garden is booming, it's booming. And right now the garden booming. And I always think about it like that. We had two more sisters to help these sisters when it comes to harvesting the garden, weeding it, you know, watering it, making sure everything. And they got a pretty good schedule going. And the sisters, you know, if anybody else comes across them, they'll tell you. One thing I don't play about is that garden. I'm like, hey, this garden got to be right. But the harvest, man, it's booming all over the place. But you only got a few sisters. They can really get out there consistently and get things done. Right? Hmm. Now let's look at that in the spiritual sense. It's the exact same thing. There's so much work to be done spiritually. And in this ministry, you have no excuse. The harvest is plentiful. Hmm. Who's going to go pick it? Who's going to go out there and go do the work to get what they need spiritually? Pastor got over, we got a running joke around here to, from Brother Lee. Pastor got over 6,000 videos. There's so much fruit there. But who's going to get out there and pick it? Hmm. There's so many teachings. There's so many instructions. We got so many videos from Pastor Corey. Teachings. I mean, powerful teachings. So many from our elders. The harvest is there, man. But who wants to do the work? Who wants to do the work spiritually? Who wants to do the work physically? Who wants to do the work that it takes? So when I say that, man, if I had two more brothers, if I had two more sisters, you know, obviously I'm speaking in a physical sense of the work on the land, but also mainly in a spiritual sense of us just getting stuff done together because I tell you what, when the word says that Yahweh inhabits the praise of his people, it's the truth. When you get together with saints, man, and you're worshiping the king, you're praying together, you're doing deliverance together, people laying hands and seeing people being healed, man, it's a powerful, powerful thing. And it happens all over the place. You think about two weeks ago, that message that Shepherd preached two weeks ago. I don't know if you remember during Shabbat, you can hear demons manifesting during service on the camera. Mm. And it was one of the most powerful deliverance sessions we've had right after service. And I'm sitting there, and I know it was taking place at all the other communities, too. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's, you, it's, it's not about just having a bunch of numbers. What I'm learning is really, truly about having the right people, the right people who's willing to do the same thing that you did, which is what? Give it all. Because that's the main thing. You know this pastor talks about Ananias and Safari so much. Because right. it's the truth. Who's going to give it all? And right. the people that are usually the ones that get the most issues are the ones that ain't give it all. They still got a foot in the world somewhere. Mm. Still got a crutch in the world somewhere that they feel like they can fall back on if stuff don't go their way. Mm. And if you can um, talk about, I know you've experienced it. Talk talk about the effect one person who who who's not all in who's who's how the effect that can have on on a community. Oh yeah, words say that one sinner destroys much good. Is the truth mm. and. Because you can have one person that can bring down the morale of everybody. You can have one person that does something consistently wrong or has just, ha again, has a bad spirit about them. Complaining, murmuring, you know, people that you have to correct constantly. It's not even about just correction, but usually it happens when you're correcting the same things constantly. From a person it can bring the morale down of everybody and again just like i said earlier you got brothers around here who they quick they're gonna be like man they'll talk about you me i'll talk about you especially <laughs> when you're on this land like hey 
And people gonna know. Now I understand there's certain situations where you, you pull somebody to the side, but I'm warning everybody else around here that hey, this person got a shitty spirit about them. And mm. I'm gonna tell everybody about this person here. After mm. I've told the person here they need to correct themselves. And if it just keep happening over and over and over, everybody on the community gonna know, hey, this one right here, they got a bad spirit about them. Don't let them cook nothing. Don't let them serve nobody nothing. Because I don't want none of them spirits jumping on nobody. <laughs> Pastor said it. And I remember I thought it was extreme when I first came into the, into the faith. Where it was like somebody that sisters that got a bad attitude. You don't want them in the kitchen. Man, it's true. It is true, man. You can taste the love when a sister cooks in love. Or when somebody got a bad spirit about them in that kitchen. Stuff don't turn out right. People getting sick off something you cook. I mean, all type of stuff going <clears> down. <throat> and it's really done because it's done in a bad spirit. Wow. So one person, man, can really bring down the morale. And that's why the leaders is so important for us to jump on that match, man. Because you can't have the morale of everybody down because you got one fool that, that, that's in their feelings or walking around offended for no reason. So, yeah, <laughs> one person can bring down the morale if, if it's allowed. And, and, and what, are, what are some ways... Uh, that a leader might deal with that? Well, what I usually do is I can sit and I can talk to the person first. Hey, what's going on? You all right? You know, I often ask a question to everybody that either comes here, even saints. They'll always tell you, bro, Daniel always asks us that. How did you sleep? Did you get a good rest? Because I'm concerned about that because it's a good thing when you wake up in the morning, you see people that's refreshed and they can yawn. They're ready to go. They're excited about their day. Or do you get the person that wakes up and they just, uh, and they got that look about them like, uh, here we go. All right, what we got today? And no, I'm concerned about how you rest. I, I always want people to be able to come here and rest well. Mm. Because we got a lot of work to do. You see? So usually I'll talk to that person, um, pull them to the side. Hey, what's going on? You okay? Did you rest well? You know? Or, if, it, it's, if it's persistent, if it's something that's an issue, hey, don't do this no more, and here's why. Don't act like this, and here's why. Don't say this, and here's why. You see what I'm saying? But if it's something that I got to come back again and again, usually the second, third time, if I'm coming to you again about the same stuff, I'm probably going to rebuke you at that point. And then the saints around going to know because they're going to hear me probably rebuking you, or I'm going to just say it in front of everybody. You know, and that's just what it is. Yeah, that's real talk. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> talk, um, let me see something. So, um, what, what are your, uh, where are you at right now on, on on the land as far as building and stuff? And what are your future, uh, some of your future plans um, uh, with, with uh, Straightway uh, Goshen? And uh, also for those of you in the comments, if you wanna ask questions, definitely put them in there. Um, right now on the land, we're, we're just about done with the, the, with the tabernacle space. We um, just got to get the carpet in and the, and the crown mold and the borders on the bottom. Um, we're just about done there. Um, then we, we're, we're done painting the nursery. We just got to get that carpeted. And then next to that, we'll put a little lounge there. So because what happens, what we start to notice is, man, Shabbat, after service and deliverance and the meal, brothers is passing out. They find it any way they can to lay down and just go to sleep. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, and a lot of times what's been happening is that is the, the houses on the land get so flooded with people. And, you know, you're constantly checking saints. To, hey, make sure you take your shoes off. Don't, I mean, just stupid stuff. Don't, you know, <laughs> stop flushing all this down the toilet. and Just stuff, because one thing we know is Israel is hard on some structures, man. Hey, hey, man, hey, houses. hey, let's set the parking break right there. <laughs> Let's we gonna park it right there and speak on that one right there. Yeah, um, a lot of times what happens what happens is 
people don't when you come this way, you're on community or you maybe on a homestead or you come in fellowship every week on Shabbat, is you don't see the expenses. Those people don't see the expenses. They don't know how fast ten thousand dollars can fly. Mm. Look, I just thought about ten thousand dollars. You hand me ten thousand dollars right now, I can it's already spent. It literally <laughs> just got spent in my mind like that, just as I was talking about it, on stuff that the land, the community needs right. to get done. They don't see the expenses. All they see is the result of the work. So they come in, you know, you eat a good meal, you know, you come in, but simple stuff like trash. There's no excuse for trash to be on the ground outside. There's no excuse for saints to know not to be flushing certain things down the toilet. There's no excuse for tools to be left out. You see what I mean? Certain things like that is just like, dang, when you look at how the slamming of doors or certain things like that, it's like, this stuff got to get fixed. You know? This stuff got to get replaced. So what I do a lot of times is the main so, core. So it's right. like, it's, it's the basics. Yeah. What I do a lot of time is the main core brothers, I let them sit in, sit in on talking to other brothers or talking to other sisters so they can see too. I'll show them certain things to a degree like, and they're like, dang, it took this. Yeah, it took that. You know, it took this to do. So like I was saying, Israel can be hard on some houses, hard on some land. And we got to get better in that area as a whole. As a whole, we need to get better in that. You know, but I mean, we're getting this lounge area here done, so the saint can have another place, you know, on Shabbat that they can kick back and relax. If you want to take a nap or something, you can kick back and relax. But the main thing we're getting ready to start here in the fall is we're getting ready to do our first block building. Um, so we're getting all our materials and our rebar bought and blocks and, 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 and mud, and we got everything we need. Um, to get things going, we got a we got a new brother here that is actually a master masonry. So he's going to be teaching us a lot as far as laying block and getting this building built, which is going to be our chickens, our meat birds. Uh, if we're going to build a is a freezer house and another food pantry that's going to be mm -hmm. built on a three part building here. So we are that's going to be the next project here in the fall that we're going to be doing. Yeah, you're looking at some of that garden there. Oh, like yeah. I said, we got a lot of boys, man, a whole lot of young boys. So as you can see right there, they are getting the wood split up because we go through a boatload of wood in the wintertime with all of the uh, wood stoves in the houses and, you know, the boiler system to heat this building. There's a lot of wood that we go through. So we're getting it all split up now and ready to go. So, uh, brother, talk about you know you you're out there on the land, and may, uh, I'm sure you have brothers um, and sisters who are on the land who stay out there for a while, and then they they might go out into you know the heathen world, you know to go maybe go to the grocery store, and like the difference you see after being set apart when you. You know what I'm saying? When you look at the difference, because you can really, cause I, I know even living here, we live in a community house, but basically for the most part, we just deal with saints. But from time to time, you'll interact with somebody out in the world and it almost is a shock. Like, what? <laughs> you know, what'd you say? Yeah. I'm telling Talk you, about man, that. I did a video on uh, New York a couple months, uh, probably about a month or two back. I had to go to New York for two days. And I don't know how any human being lives in that, in, in that, in that place. I, I don't understand. Now I, I, now I really truly don't understand. Wow. That is one of the most vile, disgusting places I've ever seen. And you don't realize, I, I moved out of the city. I, I'm from Washington, D.C., Maryland area. I moved out of the city. I mean, I really haven't been back in the city since when I first went to college. 
but when I tell you I was uncomfortable in New York, it was one of the most uncomfortable places I could ever have stepped foot on. I was so in a hurry to get back to this land <clears throat> that I had an eight-hour window before I had to get to the airport. And I told the driver, I said, look here, take me to the airport. He was like, man, you know, you got eight hours. I can take it around and sit. No, take me to the airport. I was sitting in the airport for eight hours rather than go anywhere else in this place. So, mm. and that happens with a lot of brothers here because you have, uh, for an example, I can use Brother Lee. Brother Lee is out working his land right now. He gets up and he works hard. But then he turns around and he has to, on our business side, we got a training uh, business. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I think your internet connection skipped a little. It skipped or it might have been mine. Yeah, go, go start over. Uh, you said Brother Lee is out working on the land? Yeah, Brother Lee, he's out working on the land right now. And as soon as Brother Lee's done here in a little bit, he got to get in the car and he got to go train because we got to train the business. And he has to go train. And then he'll tell you, just like all of us, when we go out there and we got to go to that city, it's a rush to get back to the land. Because mm. it's like you said, we really don't interact. That world is so dead to us. That former life is so dead to us. So when we see the conversation, when we see how people dress, when we see what people do, it's just like, you know, and you don't go out trying to say you're witnessing a, to every single person. The most I put somebody on your heart to speak to, then you speak to them. Um, but our life is the example of what righteousness is, of what living set apart is, of what living holy is. Our life is that example. And it's clearly seen. You can clearly see the difference. You know, you can clearly see the difference. And then when people come and they see it, they notice it. They say, man, there's so much peace on this land. And wow, they, they say, man, you brothers really love each other. You sisters, y'all really love each other. And it's like, yeah. That's that video there, Drake chopping down the tree. I told you he liked it. He, he, he the one to do all the hikes. <laughs> um, that chopping that tree. Right. So, so if if somebody is new coming out to straightway indie, um, what what would you tell them? Where should their mindset be? Um, when they're new coming out to indie, usually it's it's, it's just it's simple. They. they one thing about this ministry is if you're a new sister and you come, you're usually just going to fall right in with the sisters because they'll take hold of you and say, hey, come on, this is what we do, blah, blah, blah. And it's the same thing with the brothers. You know, it's the exact same thing with the brothers where it's just like, hey, come on. And they'll usually just come. Or everybody knows when you knew, if you a brother, we point you over there to Mount Goshen and say, hey, you got to go climb that hill one time, man. And that's usually an icebreaker. So really every brother that comes here, they go to the bottom of that hill because they know they're like, all right. The smart ones, when they get here, they do it immediately. They don't wait till the last day. <laughs> they, go <laughs> get, they go get straight to that hill, like, all right, knock my hill out real quick. And, uh, and then they, you know, so it, 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 we have a good time, man. We have a good time working hard. All right, that's good, that's good. Um. Talk about the, uh, we were talking about this earlier, the trees that uh, um, y'all had to clear out there. I know y'all took out a lot of, because uh, yeah. it was it was mostly uh, forest land. Oh, yeah. Man, when we first got here, um, when we first got here, man, I saw $40,000 go in like three days. Woo. I'm talking about we bought all this equipment from chainsaws to I mean every bit of equipment you can think about we was buying it because we know we would need it and we had no clue what we was doing we was out there cutting trees down and leaving the stump and then attempting to dig the stumps out just the brothers and I'm telling you what <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about manifesting so he was like, okay, I got to sit in this chair Go out there and try to dig some stumps with your hands. <laughs> you gonna learn something. And then we we obviously wised up and end up starting to learn to run big machinery. And uh, but we cleared out a pretty big field that we're gonna put some cattle on here as soon as we finish digging this pond. 
We're digging an a, 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 a acre pond right now, which we're going to get to three acres with it pretty soon. But we cleared out all this, all of it, man, and cut these stumps, dug another big old hole, pushed all the stumps in the hole and buried them, cut all the branches and cut them trees down to 12 foot four or 10 foot four, stacked them up, and then we sold them. Wow. A lot of it we used for firewood, but we sold a lot of it and made, you know, a, a good sum of money that we were able to buy more equipment like you just saw, like the, you know, these blocks that we could build our raised beds in and uh, all of that right there where those raised beds, those raised beds are being built. That was all for us uh, when we got here. I think it's, uh, you, uh, my day, I think you're, it's Skip. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. You you said all that there is what that's where it skipped at. Okay, all, all that all that land right there was all forest that you see. Wow. And way out to the right of that picture is where the real work got done. All of that was forest, man. We tilled all that land, dug out all them stumps, and uh and really got this work done, man. We built all them hoop houses. And got an, a, we have a tremendous amount of food being grown mm. from our gardens, man. And it's it is it's a beautiful thing when you're working all day out there in the sun, and at your lunchtime you can just go to the garden and pick you some right. tomatoes, get you a cucumber, you know, eat you some spinach, some Swiss chard or something. Man, you can go out there and make you a fresh salad, man, and, <laughs> and, eat, <laughs> and go and go back to work. So it, it, it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. This is the way to go. And and talk about for the, um, you hit on it earlier about the children and 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 um, the learning experience for them and, and particularly the, uh, the, the boys being able to be around men and work. Talk about how, that, how beneficial that is and them coming up and being masculine men. Because we know that's like, uh, you know, in this day and age, like a superpower, and it's rare to find. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we got so many young boys around here, and they they they're learning to work extremely hard. They're learning to become little warriors, man. And they're always outside when they're done school. They're outside. They're on the land. Whether brother Lee grabbing them, brother Samuel grabbing them, you know. Uh, we're telling, we're showing them how to clean up stuff, weed whack, lawn mow, you know, do anything on this land. They out there today clearing out the little chicken run and, and digging a little foot around it so we can put more chicken wire down in the ground. That's what they doing today. You know, these boys are learning to be outside. They go outside, they scrape their knee, you know, they, they get cuts on the elbow, you know, they, they come in the house with dirt on their face and it's, it's daily. You know, and they're learning to live off the land. They're learning to become little warriors. And they're seeing the men in front of them do the work and do it in a good spirit and what we're doing it for, you know, to glorify the king, to lift his name up so more men can be drawn. So they're seeing this on a daily basis. And it's, it's, it's just rewarding all the way down. It's rewarding. Now, um... <clears throat> Um, uh, have you have you seen people? Um, I know you've seen people come to the community, not have their stuff together, and not get it together. You know what I'm saying? Have you seen the opposite? People come in not having their stuff together, and then end up getting tight and tightening up and getting in step with everybody. Oh yeah, because everybody's like that. I mean, we first. I mean, we've only been doing this thing almost two years. So none of us came on this land perfect knowing what to do in community. So all of us have things that we need to know. We know we got to get rid of. We know that we got to change in this area and we tighten it up. So all of us go through that. You know, it is as, 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 as iron sharpens one iron. So does another brother sharpen another. It's the exact same thing. We are sharpening each other daily. Sisters are sharpening each other daily so none of us had it together but here's what we do have we have examples in front of us right. we have men and women of y'all that have been doing this a long time yes, so sir. 
when you look at the examples of them, and then not only that, we have the word. First and foremost, we have the word in front of us. Then we have the examples. So right. when you're able to spend time in the word, spend time in prayer, and then really hold on to the people that you got in front of you. Let's give an example. I mean, I called Shepard yesterday about the net on top of the chicken coops, like the, the chicken runs. This is just minor stuff that you, you want to know so you can make sure you're doing the right thing. So none of us really had it together, you know, but you, you get all type of people. You get people with the Christian mindset that think that you can just speak everything and say, hey, this building needs to grow. I have faith that this building is going to go up and don't want to put the work in. You get the super brews that want to come around and, oh, man, and, and they tell you that you say the wrong name and <laughs> they you that, that you're doing this the wrong way, but don't none of them want to get their hand in the dirt. They think they understand the Torah. But you ain't gonna understand that Torah unless your hand is in the dirt. Bottom line, mm -hmm. I am a firm believer in that. If you don't know how to get your hand in the literal dirt, you're not understanding what's written in that book. You're just not. And so you get those people too. So, I mean, at the end of the day, the work exposes everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bottom line. Bottom line. And, that, and that's why you don't see the boat of the so-called Hebrew community doing any work besides making more video content. Yeah, they're sitting in front of it. The, they're sitting and doing four and five hour videos. I'm still trying to figure out how you have that much time in a day. Is you can yeah. sit and do four and five hour videos teaching words in Hebrew, but you don't know how to grow a tomato. <laughs> you, you like seriously, you don't you don't know how to grow one cherry tomato. You see what I'm saying? But you think you're going to understand what is written in this book. It is impossible for you yeah. to understand what's written in the scriptures unless you are an agricultural people, because then it just opens up in a whole nother way. That's and true. And you're, you're speaking to somebody who's only been doing this barely two years, bro, Mike. So can you imagine a Pastor Dow, a Pastor Corey, an Elder Rufus? Uh, Elder Mitch, you know what I mean? That's been doing this thing for a long time. Can you imagine they understanding on this? It's on another level. And that, and that's why they, a lot of these dudes, man, they got too much time on their hands. And that's why they're like, oh, yeah, this Bible don't line up. This thing is contradicts itself. And it's like, when you sit on the couch, it's going to contradict itself. Yeah, you're looking at a bunch of people who, when that time comes, they're going to take the mark. When that time comes, they're going to they're gonna assimilate to whatever this government, whatever this system say. You look at all these people talk tough now, but if you ain't prepared, you're going to do what they say. Mm. Wow. You're going to do exactly what this government say. You're going to look at it, a bunch of women. I don't need no man. I don't. I can do this on my own. Yep. I can do this, blah, blah, blah. It's going to do whatever they say. And it's just a flat out truth. Yeah. That's true, man. All right, hey, uh, if y'all have any questions, uh, put them in there, Brother Dan. While we're waiting for him to put uh, questions in there, you can uh, bring out with anything you want to uh, discuss. Um, I think we all see the day and hour that we're living in, and it is imperative that you make moves and you make them now. Yeah, you can't wait on natural family. You can't wait on. Uh, uh, friends, you can't take the opinions of colleagues and people that you're around. Yeah. You can clearly see what's going on in this day and age. If you have an eye to see that something is wrong, I need to get prepared. Something different has to happen. You better bite on that thought and run with it and get around people that are literally doing it because this thing is going to blow up, and when it blows up, it's going to blow up fast. The wickedness is on the rise so quick around us. I mean, look at what's happening in Afghanistan. I saw a video yesterday of people literally falling off of airplanes. That's 10,000 feet up in the air. I mean, the stuff going on at the border. The economy. And then, and then, and then did you see uh, down in New Orleans or wherever it's at, Louisiana or something down there, they just mandated that, you know, if you don't have a vaccine card or if you don't have a test that's uh, at least 
12 or it has to be within 24 hours you can't go in any public venues you hear that you hear that so they got that thing going <laughs> see it's gonna hey i've been on it since we moved here every saint here tell you operation erase the grocery bill because i'm telling you right now that is going to be it right there when you can't eat i don't care how tough you talk when you're not prepared and you literally looking at children that can't eat guess what they're going to do they're going to line up right in them lines they're going to take every single vaccine these companies are set to make literally billions upon billions upon billions of dollars off of this syringe and they're going to keep doing it every year it's going to be more and more boosters every couple of months more and more boosters they're going to make more and more billions <laughs> off of it and if you're not prepared i don't care how many hebrew words you know you're going to have that syringe stuck up in your ass the same way as everybody else <laughs> in the world is that's just the flat out truth mm. oh, it's real man this this thing is real yes sir. Um, yeah let's see uh, the Rufus says, save yourself. Yep. That's right. And this wicked generation. That is a fact. Well, Brother Daniel, man, this has been an awesome interview. Um, I, I mean, you, you really brought out a lot, really showing the um, um, brothers and sisters, you know, with communities about um, – and let me see, somebody put here, recently left Chicago land and bought five acres in a small town in Indy so I can learn these skills, yep. Praise you uh, If you can, Brother Daniel, um, speak on this real quick because uh, looking at what Brother Jason said, it's something, I, I, it's a big part that I think a lot of people miss. Um, I, I, I see people, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm following Pastor Dow's method. I, I bought some land, and I work on the land. Tell, talk about the, the core, most valuable thing, brotherhood and sisterhood, the fact that you, you can't do it yourself. That's it. Or even with one family. Just speak on that if you can. That's it. it uh, working the land takes an extraordinary amount of work, and you can't do it by yourself. You got to have people that are like-minded, that can come together, and that you can work together to accomplish the goal. There's always going to be work. I, I have it full well set in my mind that I'm going to work until I die. Until the most high closes my eyes, or if, I'm, if, if he takes me all the way to the end, I have it full well set in my mind that I'm going to work until that day. It's just there. And I plan on enjoying every single moment of it, growing with the family of Yah, because that is my family, bottom line. So having the right people around you with the right mindset, with the right spirit is what matters. And, and you hit it right there. Not understand that you can buy all the land you want. You cannot do it by yourself. It's impossible. You've got to have people around you. And there's people there. Because I'm telling you right now, if your mindset is set on y'all to doing what he tells you to do, he's going to put the right people around you. Right. He's going to put the right people around you. Oh, praise. That was good. That was good. Well, uh, Brother Daniel, um, I'm going I'm to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to you to uh, wrap it up with a conclusion, and then I'll, I'll take the folks out from there. So I'm going to hand it over to you. And yes, sir. First and foremost, all I can say is all praises to the Most High Yahweh. All praises to the King of Glory Himself, Yahweh, our Elohim. Understanding that if He is awoke, awoken you in this last day, run with it, run with it, run with it. Whether you're old, young, we 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 are younger men around here. We all from the city. We didn't know what the hell we was doing. We still don't know what the hell we doing. <laughs> but we learn it, and we learn it, and we learn it, and it's coming along. You can do it. You can do it. You see the writing on the wall. Let's go. Let's get the work done and prepare these places because time is short. So bless all y'all. Bless all the righteous of Israel. Love y'all dearly. All right. So, um, Brother Day, also, if you could, um, 
tell them about the Lions Den and your YouTube page, and I think you're on Facebook also. So let the people know. Yes, sir. We do a uh, a weekly broadcast called the Lions Den. It comes on after um, Blog Talk Radio with our beloved Shepherd Pastor Dow, um, and we just just do we just discuss certain topics, stuff that we saw during that week or things we've been reading and. You know, we, we just uh, talk about certain topics. All the brothers sit, and that's the beginning of that uh, beautiful morning that we're able to just sit back, relax, and get plenty of rest. So it's a good time for, you know, people to check in. If you're up late, you can sit around and uh, watch those brothers here from Indiana. So uh, Brother Daniel Muir on YouTube and Daniel Muir on Facebook as well. Uh, so check out the Lions then. It comes on weekly. Around about ten o'clock after, uh, between ten and ten thirty after, Blog Talk Radio would pass it down. All right, all right. Um, so yeah, y'all uh, definitely appreciate y'all tuning in um, as we continue the um, the Straightway Life series. Um, the next episode is going to be brother kabir oh yeah looking forward to that literally literally <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be, we have brother kabir on um and i'm sure that that's that's gonna be another awesome interview um i've been getting a lot of correspondence really uh telling me how this has really been blessing people Appreciate and that. um I hope it is because this is my last ditch effort to really wake folks up because you know I'm I'm we're in a very busy mode down here in Straightway, Florida. Just um, we're in that stage where <laughs> we're raising capital and getting in a position to where we could acquire a piece of land, hopefully in the short term. So uh, we uh, brothers down here have been putting in long hours, really getting after it. And um, uh, straightway Indian brother Daniel and, and those brothers up there, we consider them like our big brother assembly because they they're right. They we can clearly see the path that they went recently. They're the most recent people getting on land, so we we really watch what they do and we try to uh, um. Uh, follow that example and of course follow the overall example of straightway as a whole and pass it down also. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Yeah, so, um, but anyway, y'all, with that said, uh, I appreciate y'all. If y'all enjoyed the um, the interview, this episode, definitely hit the like button, definitely share, definitely subscribe. So uh, when we do the next episode, you get notified um, and Definitely put this video out there. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Brother Daniel, appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to come on and do this interview. Um, and with that said, y'all, we're going to wrap this up. Appreciate y'all tuning in. I'm Michael Israel. You're watching Spiritual Combat. I'm head of Straightway Florida down here. And shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom.